three angles, one roundhouse kick over 100 test strikes, and data that's about to change how you think about your roundhouse kick. So which roundhouse angle should you choose? By testing power, speed, deception, and KO potential, I've discovered each kick's place in your arsenal. As both a martial artist and an exercise scientist, I've always been fascinated how small changes in technique can lead to dramatically different results. The roundhouse kick is the perfect example of this. Same basic movement, but three different angles that could be the difference between scoring a point or landing a knockout. So I set out to test each angle, and immediately patterns started to emerge. The wider the arc, the more force generated, but that extra power comes with a hidden cost. To understand what's really happening here, we need to break down each angle's mechanics. Now before we dive in, let me outline the tests. All kicks were thrown with the pivot foot in the same position, and the power cube at the same height. I threw 10 power kicks of each angle, starting with wide, then traditional, then narrow. I rested before the next set, then changed the order and repeated. This was to eliminate fatigue as a factor in the results. After 60 power kicks, I then repeated the same process for speed, performing 60 more kicks. Let's start with the wide roundhouse kick. This version has a chamber position of above 90 degrees, before turning over and horizontally striking the target. This wider arc allows for more rotation and more time to generate momentum. Due to this, the wide angle generated our highest force output at nearly 95,000 Franklins, and 53,000 watts of power. But this extra distance comes with two significant costs. The first is speed, taking on average three quarters of a second to land. Now, the average human reaction time is 200 milliseconds. That gives you over half a second to see it coming and react. The second significant cost is accuracy. Despite having the highest peak force, the wider arc makes it harder to maintain consistency. The data confirms this, averaging 39,000 watts across our power kick testing, which is 37% lower than the peak power. Let's record our findings for the wide angle. Keep in mind, these scores are only to compare the kicks to each other, not to compare them to other techniques. First up, the power is the highest of the three kicks. Based on its 95,000 Franklin score, I've given it 9.5 out of 10 for power. One of the major drawbacks of this kick is its speed. Due to this, I've given it a 5.5 out of 10. Now, when it comes to deception, the wide kick is very easily recognized. It can't be disguised as anything else, so its deception is quite low. So I've given it a 4 out of 10. And lastly, the KO potential. Because of its very high power, this kick has a very high KO potential, even though its deception is quite low. So it scores an 8 out of 10. So while the wide angle maximizes power, what happens when we bring that arc in closer? Let's look at the other extreme, the narrow kick. The narrow kick has a chamber position of around 15 degrees when I measured it. The knee is lifted almost straight up, then delivered with a quick whipping motion. Due to this whipping motion, the narrow angle peaks at 50,000 Franklins and 32,000 watts of power. This is about 47% less power than the wide angle. But the narrow kick comes in as our quickest, landing in just over two thirds of a second. Let's record our findings for the narrow angle. The maximum power achieved was 50,000 Franklins, giving it a score of five out of 10. Being the fastest kick with an average reaction time of 0.674 seconds, this nets a score of 7.5 out of 10. Deception is the second area where this kick excels. Due to its tight angle, it requires minimal space to execute. This also makes it hard to read, so I'm giving it a deception score of 8 out of 10. Now lastly, KO potential. The low power of the narrow kick means it doesn't have the stopping power needed for a KO. However, due to its deception and speed, it can easily land on vital targets. So I've given it a five out of 10. So if the wide angle generates maximum power, but is slow, and the narrow angle is fast, but doesn't generate much power, what about the middle ground? The traditional angle most martial artists are taught. This version has a chamber position of around 30 degrees and peaks at 84,000 Franklins and 48,000 watts of power. That's only 11% less power than the wide angle, but 47% more than the narrow. But here's something fascinating. Looking at average power output, the traditional angle actually produces higher consistent power than the wide angle. There are two possible explanations for this surprising result. 
First, I am more practiced at the traditional angle. Years of repetition leading to higher consistency in power generation. Second, the wider angle's arc makes the kick inherently harder to control. The longer path likely creates more room for variance, resulting in a wider range of power outputs and a lower average. Let's record the traditional angle's results. We found a maximum output of 85,000 franklins. So for this, I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10 on power. The speed for traditional was almost exactly the same as wide, so it scores the same 5.5 out of 10. Due to the traditional angle's diagonal cutting motion, it is more deceptive than the wide angle, but less deceptive than the narrow angle. For this, I'm giving it 6 out of 10. As the traditional angle only has a 10% deficit to power compared to the wide angle, yet is more deceptive, I'm giving it the same KO potential with a score of 8 out of 10. Let's review each kick's pros and cons to decide where they fit within your arsenal. Up first is the narrow kick. Now this kick dominates point fighting and sport martial arts, where knockouts are not the goal. The narrow angle's deceptiveness and speed are great for scoring points. If you spar for fun, then the narrow angle is perfect, because from its chamber position it can be transformed into a number of different kicks, hence its high deceptive abilities. This is great for playing and setting up other people during your sparring sessions. If you compete in combat sports, then the narrow kick is a great stepping stone that leads to that highlight reel question mark kick knockout. Now, the traditional angle proves why it is the foundation of all the roundhouse kicks. Balancing speed, power, deception, and consistency, it is truly the complete package. It also packs enough power for a knockout, but the consistency for precise striking. It is a kick that everyone has taught and knows, and should be trained to perfection. And finally, the wide angle. When it comes to pure stopping power, this is your weapon of choice. But, you'll need to set it up first. My recommendations are to use it when your opponent is against the ropes and can't circle away, or if you're up against someone who likes to wear the kicks and walk you down. Be warned though, its raw power comes at the cost of speed, deception, and consistency. Point fighters, this version is handy to know, but one you'll most likely not be needing. For everyone else though, it is good to be able to throw this. You never know when you're gonna need that power spike. And this brings us to the end of the video. Three angles, each with their own pros and cons. Understanding the differences will help you choose the right tool for the right job. If you would like to look over any of the data that I've collected and presented in this video, I'll leave a link to that in the description. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, I would greatly appreciate if you could give it a like and share it with your fellow martial artists. Make sure to subscribe because I have more martial arts technique experiments in the works.